President Trump has promised to improve how the Department of Veterans Affairs cares for former servicemen and women. But a new report out today questions how the department is being run and whether outside influences are affecting the treatment that veterans receive. Nick Schifrin has the story. When former Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin closed the stock exchange last November, he had an unusual helper. That's Shulkin in the middle on the right, Captain America, a character in the Marvel Universe. It just so happens that Shulkin's most powerful and most informal advisor was this man, Ike Perlmutter, the chairman of Marvel Entertainment and a longtime friend of President Trump. Perlmutter became the leader of what the investigative news site ProPublica calls the VA's shadow rulers. Perlmutter, Bruce Moskowitz, a doctor, and Mark Sherman, a lawyer. None of the three have served in the U.S. military or the government. But they have outsized influence over all VA decisions, according to the story written by Pope ProPublica reporter Isaac Arnsdorf, who joins us in the studio. Also here, Melissa Bryant, a former Army intelligence officer and the chief policy officer of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Thank you to you both. Thank you. Thank Isaac, you. let me start with you. What is the relationship, what has been the relationship between these three men, the shadow rulers as you've called them, and the VA overall? We basically got these three guys down in Mar-a-Lago who for the past year and a half have been acting as a shadow leadership for the Department of Veterans Affairs and weighing in on all manners of policy and personnel decisions, uh, despite having officially no role in government, um, never having served in the U.S. military or the U.S. government previously, um, and not really having any direct experience that's relevant to, to this. Uh, they've been kind of hovering over the officials who are actually in the government and uh, telling them how they think things should be done. So, you know, a president, uh, cabinets, I mean, they all have informal advisors, right? Everybody gets advice from outside of government. Why is this unusual? Why is this a big deal? Uh, it's definitely different the way that they've been assigned a particular agency under their purview. You've never really seen something like that where it's so directly assigned to outside advisors like this, uh, demanding that officials fly down to Mar-a-Lago at taxpayer expense to meet with them and run things by them. And um, it very quickly became clear within the department that people who didn't get along with them were pretty quickly out of a job. And, and the relationship is quite interesting. Let me read an email between Bruce Moskowitz, one of these three, and David Shulkin, the former Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Bruce Moskowitz writes, we do not need to meet in person monthly, but meet face to face only when necessary. We will set up phone conference calls at a convenient time. David Shulkin, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs at the time writes, I know how busy all of you are and having you be there in person and so present after we met was truly a gift. What does that say about the relationship? Well, what it says is that they're clearly trying to establish that uh, Shulkin needs to come to them to do his job. And there, you can see from the very beginning there, there's this, there's this friction that would grow over the time uh, that Shulkin was serving as secretary and ultra, ultimately contributed to him being fired, that uh, they began to feel like he wasn't listening to them. So certainly we've got a lot of turmoil in the leadership of the Veterans Affairs as we're talking about this outsized influence. We should just read this statement uh, from Perlmutter, Moskowitz, and Sherman that they provided to you. They said, while we were always willing to share our thoughts, we did not make or implement any type of policy, possess any authority over agency decisions, or direct government officials to take any actions. But did they influence policy, especially the efforts toward privatization? There's no question that they had vast influence. And, and technically, they're not making the decisions themselves. But when everyone knows that Ike will just pick up the phone and call the president if he doesn't get his way, it's very clear to everyone at the VA um, that it has to be their way. And, and that's the way it goes. Uh, now, obviously, the, the big debate about the VA over the past year and a half has been about the extent to which it should be using in-house medical care government run versus private care. And um, there was a point last year where Perlmutter weighed in um, on the side of private care. His idea was basically to bring private providers into the VA to have a look around and see what services they sh thought should be outsourced to providers like themselves. And that obviously prevent, presents something of a conflict of interest. Uh, explain that more. I mean, again, what's wrong with that? There are some people who believe that there should be more privatization in the VA. What's wrong with people arguing for more privatization? Absolutely. And this is, was a big part of 
President Trump's campaign. Um, but um, most veterans oppose that, um, and the major veterans groups oppose that um, because their view is that they get better care in the VA and that it would be much more expensive and serve veterans worse to, to just have them out in the private sector. So Melissa Bryant, let me, let me turn to you. I want to ask about your notion of privatization in a second. But this notion of outsized influence from the outside, informal advisors, and also turmoil at the top of the veterans' fairs, does that negatively influence the care that the VA can provide veterans? It absolutely does. What we see from the veteran service organizations and um, <clears throat> my colleagues across the veteran space is that we've seen fits and starts for programs and for uh, policies uh, throughout the last particularly eight months uh, since uh, Dr. Shulkin has uh, faced his ethics challenges and then he was ousted, um, but then Following that, we saw a lot of challenges to uh, contracts such as the electronic health care uh, records uh, contract with Cerner, $10 billion contract that we saw uh, start and then fall back, and then it, it was eventually restarted again, but that's something that will be implemented over the next 10 years. We've seen a decrement in care for suicide prevention, uh, even though that there are major plans, and there's the joint plan of action between the Department of Defense and the VA to ensure that there's no veteran that's left behind uh, that's flipped through the cracks of uh, care for mental health uh, care. And so we're concerned that we're not seeing the absolute best that the VA can do because they're so distracted with the turmoil within leadership and these outside influencers who are able to distract uh, civil servants and others who are trying to do what's best for the VA. And why do you and your organization oppose efforts that President Trump has talked about, that these outside advisors have talked about toward privatization? We oppose privatization in that it would, as uh, Isaac spoke to, it would cost upwards of trillions of dollars by our best estimates. And it could possibly lead to uh, poor health care and poor health care outcomes for veterans. We know that the VA, uh, it's under its uh, infrastructure, its uh, facilities and um, the providers that they have, they best understand the military community. They understand health care um, and the challenges of the invisible wounds of war, such as PTSD, uh, traumatic brain injury. They understand things like um, amputation and the advances that they made in prosthetics for veterans. And so these are the types of uh, health care advances that the VA does best. And we would love to see infrastructure being invested in within the VA to ensure they can continue to serve the military community, and particularly for the wounds of war that we know are germane to our population. And that's what we see could be compromised with privatization. And quickly in the time we have left, we have a new secretary this week, mm -hmm. uh, the, his first full week on the job. Uh, what are you looking for in his decision making this week to know uh, whether the VA can fix some of its problems going forward? We would like to see Secretary Wilkie uh, to have the autonomy and the authority to be able to do what's right for veterans. We know that this is near and dear to his heart. He talks all the time about how this is a part of his family legacy, and I get that too. Um, you know, this is a family business for many of us. My father is a Vietnam vet. I'm an Iraq War vet. And so we want to ensure that that commitment to service translates into commitment to care for those who have borne the battle, our survivors and our dependents. And we would hope that Secretary Wilkie has the latitude to be able to make the right decisions and not be influenced by outside money and outside influencers who may not have the best care or interest of veterans at heart. Melissa Bryant, Isaac Arnsdorf, thank you to you both. Thank you. Thanks.